This video is being sponsored by Riverside. Have you ever thought about how much goes into learning the craft of filmmaking? This camera has broken barriers for me. It's taught me, helped me grow, pushed me to new limits, taken me to another level. It's ushered me to grasp the things I couldn't understand and supported me in the things that I've been taught. It's promoted my willingness to learn and desire to become better. People complain about this camera online with rolling shutter, the cropped in stabilization, and battery life. But having and using the ZVE-10 for over a year has single-handedly created a new understanding for me of both the limitations our cameras have and the insane image quality that you can get with the camera that's selling right now for under $1,000. My name is Joe, I'm a ZVE-10 enthusiast, and you're watching The Film Alliance. Vibing, yeah. me and my folks all good at sunny shining. Today we're going to talk about the ZVE-10. I've had it for over a year and I've used it on all different types of videos from client shoots to B cams to astrophotography to creating YouTube videos not only for it but with it and even as a nature documentary. Don't worry, we're not going to leave out the rolling shutter which is the elephant in the room that everyone seems to focus on when it comes to this camera. But after using this thing for over a year, I have a pretty good idea and a lot of experience with it, so I feel like I'm well suited to talk a little bit about it. To start off, this camera thrives on image quality. I wouldn't say that the kit lens is going to showcase its full potential. If you really wanna see how great the image quality is, then you're going to have to invest in better glass. A lot of people say your camera is only as good as the glass that you have on it, and that is definitely the case with the ZV-E10. I've made a video about the different lenses that you can use with this camera, and I'll leave that one in the description. But basically, it comes down to whatever you need to use this camera for. For example, if you're using it to vlog, then you're gonna wanna invest in like a wide angle lens, like this Viltrox 13 millimeter lens, or the Sony 11 millimeter lens. I've made a video about both of those lenses, and I'll leave that in the description as well. But if you're doing run and gun, then it might be best to invest in something like the Tamron 28 to 75, because then you'll have different focal lengths to choose from. But as long as you understand what you're shooting and you know what lens you're looking for, that's when the ZVE-10 really shines. It helps by asking yourself the question, what am I shooting and what should the frame look like? And if you can answer that, then that will give you a good indication on which lens you should pick up for your camera. So in that sense, this camera has really helped me understand that philosophy. It's actually gotten me to ask that question whenever I go on to set. When I first got it, I know a lot of people complain about how hard it is to understand the menu system, but now I'm pretty proficient with it and this really is like an instrument. Your camera's like an instrument and you have to know how to play it and communicate with it. Communication is the biggest thing in filmmaking. So to be able to communicate with your camera, don't talk to it, people might think you're crazy. But as long as you can communicate with your camera what you are trying to do, then that's really a huge step in the direction of making better videos. But when you're dealing with actual people, sometimes a text or a phone call just doesn't do it. You need to get in front of the person, you need to have that meeting and be able to communicate properly. Don't even get me started on Zoom calls. Hey, what do you know? That's a perfect segue to today's sponsor, which is Riverside.fm. What happens when you have a virtual meeting or an interview that you wanna edit and put up onto YouTube, or you're having a virtual meeting and you wanna record it so that you can go back and listen to a lot of that pertinent information? Riverside is a platform to record studio quality podcasts and video recordings from anywhere. Riverside is used by myself alongside more than 70,000 people ranging from individual creators to well-known creators like Guy Raz, Gary Vee, 
and companies such as Spotify and the New York Times. Riverside records locally to each participant's computer. That means you can keep the highest quality possible in terms of sound and video for each person speaking regardless of internet bandwidth. You're actually able to keep the high quality of whatever hardware you're using. So if you're shooting in 4K with your camera, it will record it to your computer and that's where you're gonna edit later. So no more glitchiness from that bad bandwidth. While the live streaming portion is not that clear, the actual recording will stay true to that high quality, which makes it a lot easier to edit with and also your video files that you do edit won't look so unprofessional. I'll leave a link in the description for 15% off so you can enjoy the right way video meetups. Now back to our review with the ZV-E10. I've used many different picture profiles, all of the picture profiles in the ZV-E10. And although I'm keen about using S-Log3 because then you have a lot more room to grade in post, I've actually settled on Cine 2 with the color mode in still. And I found that this was the easiest picture profile to do quick little color correction, but also you're getting the truest to life colors straight out of camera. But again, it's all about whatever you're using this camera for. If you're doing long form or short form narratives or documentary work, then you're gonna wanna shoot in S-Log3 because you're gonna want all of your clips to have the same color tone and match up. However, if you're just a YouTuber and you're just making videos about your gear and using this for BTS, then that Cine 2 works perfectly for me. The biggest breakthrough I've had since owning the ZV-E10 is custom white balancing. I didn't realize how much of a huge difference that makes when you're in a controlled lighting environment. Now a quick pro tip, if you're in a controlled lighting environment and you custom white balance and you even turn the camera more than 15 degrees, then you have to re-custom white balance. So it's important to get your frame right and to know everything that you want in the frame before you custom white balance because if you introduce another light or you turn the camera a little bit, then you're gonna have to go back and re-custom white balance. If you're not 100% schooled up on how to custom white balance, your ZV-E10, I'll leave the directions to that in the description. But once you start getting the hang of it and once you make a habit of it, your videos will look so much better. A lot of people say that you can fix white balance in post, but I found that to be not as true as just getting it right in camera. So if you make it a habit to start custom white balancing like I have, then you'll be super happy with your videos. Now, if you're outside, I just do auto white balance and that seems to work, especially with all of the different cloud movements and the sun comes and goes and depending on what time of day it is. If it's nighttime, then I'll custom white balance. If I'm shooting astrophotography, I'll leave that in auto white balance as well. But a lot of people say, go ahead and turn your white balance to incandescent because that'll make the sky look more real. But for me, auto white balance worked. When I first got this camera over a year ago, I dove into it to figure out what I wanted my custom menu system to look like and the function menu system. And somebody actually commented, he would like to see some of that in use. And if you've seen any of my videos from that time until now, you've seen that menu system in use because I have not changed it. In that video, I went through and I customized the camera to be kind of a cinematic camera so that you can go out and get some really good shots fast. And so I'll leave that video in the description. And I've left this camera in that same exact settings setup since I've had it. So that works for me. Has the ZV-E10 ever overheated on me? One time, when I was doing a comparison video between this camera and that $100 camera called the Vijanger, I wanted to see how long this could record in 4K24 before the battery ran out. And at about 55 minutes before the battery ran out, I got that little temperature logo on the display, so it overheated. But other than that, I've never had an issue. I have had a lot of people comment on my videos that their ZV-E10s overheat maybe when they're outside or in the direct sunlight, I don't know. But I do have a theory about that, and that is, I wonder which SD card they're using, because for me, the SD card that I'm using, which is a SanDisk, it's a fast writing SD card. And I wonder if the SD cards that they're using are kind of backing up the camera. I don't even know if that's exactly how cameras work, but I just wonder to myself if they're using an SD card that might be a cheaper one or might not have very fast write speeds and so that's why they're getting overheating. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Please let me know in the comments if that's a valid theory or not. All right, so elephant in the room rolling shutter. I never actually had noticed the rolling shutter on the ZV-E10 when I first got it. I was super thrilled about it and it just seemed to be like an awesome camera, but people kept on commenting that they were seeing rolling shutter with it. And then slowly but surely, I started to notice what they were talking about. And I started to really notice it when I had the Sony 55 to 210 
on this camera. I was doing the nature documentary and I would just move the camera like this a little bit and everything far away just seemed to be like jello. And I also noticed it when I did a vlog comparison. It's like anytime I held the camera out and I was doing kind of like a headshot, I noticed that the background, the trees in the background kind of had a, a jello effect. Other than that, if you keep this camera on a gimbal or a tripod, I don't think you should have any issues with rolling shutter. So anyways, there's that. But if you are entry level and you just wanna get into storytelling and just dive in to the world of filmmaking or video creation, then this is a great little camera to start out with. I actually originally bought the ZV-E10 to be a backup B cam to my A7 III, which was a backup A cam to my A7S III. And one concern that I had was if these colors would match up with the A7 III and the A7S III. And straight out of box, no it doesn't. I was actually kind of nervous because when I first saw the image coming out of this and I compared it to those full frame cameras, I was kind of upset and I was like, I have to figure out what to do. But then I used the custom picture profile that I put inside the ZV-1 to make S Cinetone look for the A7S III, and that seemed to do the trick. I might need to do a little bit more of a customization in this camera to get it even closer, but it gets it close enough to where clients would never notice the difference. Now you and I might, but they wouldn't. Some of my favorite things about this camera is the image quality, the astrophotography that you can get with it, and also how versatile it is. You can kind of just put it in your camera bag and vlog with it, but you're still getting a super high quality image out of it. You could really use it as a vlogging setup and then two minutes later, throw it on a gimbal and do some run and gun shooting with it. If you are gonna vlog with it, then I would definitely get like a micro shotgun mic that you can put on the top, just like that little Comica micro shotgun mic that I used in my 13 millimeter versus 11 millimeter lens video. It's going to make your audio so much better. The in-body mics that are in these cameras are really not made to be your end-all audio. They're really just kind of used for reference or at least in professional circles. Because your image quality is going to be so high, then you're going to want to match that with audio. I'll leave the Comica mic in the description, the one that I use for vlogging. I also love how there's really nothing special about this camera kind of very self-explanatory. All the buttons are there. Now that I customize it to my liking, I know where everything is. And I'm, like I said, it's like an instrument, so I'm pretty proficient with it. Now for the things that I don't like about it. Well, we already know about the rolling shutter. Another thing that I'm not really fond about is how it does punch in so far when you click on active stabilization. If you're using the kit lens and you turn active stabilization on, and you try to vlog with it, it's really not gonna look that good. I know they market it as a vlog camera, but it, it punches in almost 40%, so it's so close to your face. And then if you turn stabilization off, you can't even use the video footage because it's so shaky. So you end up either having to put the camera on a gimbal or buying a new lens like this one, the Viltrox 13 millimeter F1.4. Then you can throw active stabilization on and you're far enough away from the camera that your framing is right. But I think no matter what, you're gonna have to buy accessories for this camera to set it up for whatever it is that you're shooting, whether that's a gimbal to get smoother footage or a wide angle lens to get that nice vlog look or maybe some real estate photography. Another thing I love about it is that it has a mic port and a headphone jack so you can actually monitor your audio whether you're on playback or actually recording and that's super helpful. And you don't have to wait till you get home and then in front of a computer and then you realize that everything is peaking. Now that we're talking about peaking, one of my favorite settings, shortcut buttons that I've put on this camera is the audio. I put it right here at the top corner. So all I have to do is click on it and then I can monitor my audio and use the control dial to turn it up or down. So anyways, that's my one year review with the ZV-E10. I really don't have much bad to say about it because I've gotten so much great footage with it. Maybe just those little shortcomings, but also it'd be nice if it had 4K 60, but maybe we're gonna have to wait for the ZV-E10 Mark II or the ZV-2, still waiting on that one. Well, it's not back ordered anymore, it's back on the shelves. So if you're thinking about it, I would say pick it up, maybe depending on what you're using it for. If you have a little bit more money, then maybe it's time to go up to like the A7 IV and even more than that, then the A7S III. But this is a great little entry level camera. I hope this video helped you. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance. Until the next video, have a nice week. Whew.